Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into cyclic barrier. We will see how to use cyclic barrier to orchestrate multiple tasks. Before we start looking into cyclic barrier from the coding perspective, let's first look into what problem we are trying to solve. The book have a very good example of the problem and I have picked the example as is from the book. And the example from the book is that we have a cage which has some lines in it and the task that we want to achieve is to clean the cage. At high level, this is how the sequence will be. So we will remove all the lines from the cage, we will clean the cage and once it's clean, we'll put back all the lines. Now let's say the zoo have only one employee. The employee will remove the lines. So it will remove all the lines in the cage one after the other. And once all the lines are removed, that employee goes into the cage cleans the cage, comes back out, and then put back all the lines in the cage. So if we have an, one employee, then we do not have any problem. We do not need any orchestration. The employee is doing what it is supposed to do. Now, let's say we have a four employees and we want to use all the four employees to do as much work as possible in parallel so that the work as a whole is done in a greater speed. Given that they all are four different human beings, all of them will have a different caliber and hence they might work in a different speed. So there is a possibility that employee number one removes the line and goes in the cage to clean it even before the other three lines are removed. That means employee number one is much faster than the other three employees. But now we have a problem. There is employee number one in the cage with three lines in it, which might not end well. So what we want is, even though employee number one is fast, we need to ask him to wait until all the other three lines are removed from the cage. And once they are, then all the four employees will go in the cage. They all will clean the cage. And when all of them do their part of the job, come back out like all the four employees are back out of the cage then we will bring all the four lines to the cage. So now in the multi-threading world think of four employees as four different threads and as you see that we need some kind of orchestration which would communicate in between these threads. So even though one thread is faster than other we want it to wait until the other three have done that unit of task. And only after all the four threads have done the task, they will move on to the next unit. So, so in this case, the first unit is to remove the line. The next unit is clean the cage. And the third unit is put back the lines. So this orchestration of the tasks can be done by using the cyclic barrier. Now let's jump into the IntelliJ and look at the example. So for this, I'm going to create a package called part 11. And within that package, I'm going to create a class called zoo manager. In the zoo manager class, I'm going to add a method called remove lion. And within that method, I'm going to simply put a print statement where I will say removing lion. And what I'm going to do is also going to print the ID of the thread. And the way we get the ID of the thread is thread dot current thread dot get ID. And I'm going to create a next method called clean cage. And similarly, I'm going to create a third method called add line. And I'm going to create a fourth method called perform tasks. And this method will call all the previous method I have created. So which is remove line, clean cage, add line. Now I'll create another class called main class. And in this class, I will have the main method. I'm going to define the executor service. And in this example, I'm going to have four different threads. And next I'm going to create an instance of zoo manager and next I'm going to submit the task using the executor service and the task will be doing all the three different 
tasks we have defined and for that I'm going to call perform task method. Since we have four threads, either I can copy paste this four times to, to have all the four threads execute the task or in this case, what I'm going to do is create a for loop and then submit the task four times. And finally, I'm going to shut down the executor service. Now, I haven't used any orchestration of the task. So let's just run the program as is and see what output do we get. So in the output, we see that thread 16, thread 14 and thread 13 removed the line and then thread 14, 16 and 13 started cleaning the cage. And if you notice in the output, couple of lines below, thread 15 is now removing the line, which means when thread 14, 16 and 13 were cleaning the cage, there was still one line in the cage. So which is not what we want. So to solve this problem, we will use cyclic barrier. I'm going to create an instance of cyclic barrier and the constructor of cyclic barrier needs an integer value. I'm going to give four and I'll explain you why I have given four here. And in our zoo manager, in the perform task, I'm going to take that cyclic barrier as an argument. And within the method, I'm going to call await method on that cyclic barrier. The await method throws a couple of exceptions. So let me wrap this these lines into try catch and catch the exception. Now what that await method is going to do is it is going to stop the execution of the threads until a counter has been reached. And that counter is the number that we gave in the constructor when we created the cyclic barrier which is four in our case. I'm going to pass this cyclic barrier into the method. And now let me save and run the program. Now, as you see in the output, thread 14, 16, 13, and 15, they are removing the line. And after that, the threads are, other threads started cleaning. The code change that we have done, we have added awaits method after the remove line method call, which means that if the threads are fast, then they will remove the line and then they will stop at the await method until all the four thread reaches to that point. And that's why we see removing line by all the four threads. We still have a problem. The problem is that in this case, thread 14 and 13 started cleaning the cage and 14 was just a bit faster. So it cleaned the cage and then it also started adding the line. And in this case, the 13th thread is still cleaning the cage. So which means we have some employees in the cage while we started adding the lines back. So now we need another barrier after we clean the cage so that the lines only starts getting added after all the four threads are done with cleaning of the cage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cyclic barrier. And for this cyclic barrier, I'm going to use a different variant of the constructor. And this variant will take a runnable task as well along with the integer value. And this runnable task will be run when the said number of threads reaches that barrier. And in this case, I'm going to simply print as cage cleaned. Now let me pass that second cyclic barrier into the method. And in the method, I'm going to add c2.await after clean cage. Now I will save and run the program. As you see in the output, now the unit of tasks that we separated by await methods are done as a one unit. So we will always remove all the lines and then we will always all the four employees or threads will clean the cage and that cage cleaned output. So this is that uh, runnable method I gave in the constructor. And once that's done, then adding of the line tasks happen. So now it doesn't matter 
how fast a thread works that thread is kind of stopped until all the threads catch up to that particular point so this is the problem that cyclic barrier solves so we can use cyclic barrier to orchestrate different tasks that is all i wanted to discuss in this video if you have liked the video hit the like button and please do subscribe for my upcoming video and don't forget to hit the bell icon thank you so much i'll see you in the next video